Welcome to the ancient ruins. Mwahahaha. Hey there, my name is Salandrak, and welcome back to another episode of my Wagstaff Reign of Giants playthrough series. When we left off last time, we had just downed a Yukis and are about a week into our second autumn. Will we be graced with a visit from Berger and have a chance to down our second seasonal giant? Let's find out. It's currently dusk of day 81, and the last of my pigman army from the Yukis is bailing and running for home. Later, buddy! My sanity could use a top off, so I make a couple of taffy and then run up to make a signpost for my pet koalophant, Wumbo. I was thinking of writing a nice message on it, but then remember that you can only do that in Don't Starve Together, so I hammer it down to get the boards back. Taffy get my sanity back up to max, then I go ahead and eat some stale pierogi to top off my hunger and health. As it gets close to night, I head over to the walrus camps, as I seem to remember having left an extra walrus tusk on the ground out here, which I'll need for a brush for future beefalo taming. And yep, camp by the tall bird nest has the tusk. I find the tall bird killing some frogs, the legs of which I pick up, and then I run off into the savannah to stock up on grass a bit. There's still a ton of frogs all over the place, but I'll just leave them until I want to take their legs away. Much of the grass out here hadn't regrown yet, so I head back to base. <laughs> I love how it looks when grass regrows. Twigs too. I'm planning to make a bundling wrap with lots of backup supplies for a potential extended cave trip, so I want to have plenty available. I also want to bolster my supply of honey poultices so I make some extra papyrus. A new bundling wrap gets made, and then I get tired of that frog hopping through my base and lure it into a trap. Full stacks of grass and cut twigs and two stacks of logs go into the bundling wrap which, combined with my food care package, will allow me to stay away from home for quite some time. I had a couple of flowers going bad in my fridge, so I go ahead and turn them into a new talabrella, and as dusk arrives make the honey poultices. The walrus tusk and steel wool get turned into a brush, and then I grab a stack of honey, get rid of stuff I don't want to take with me, and then head out towards a new sinkhole. In a previous episode, I had explored a bit of a sinkhole in the swamp, but a big chunk of that map was separated by an uncrossable chasm which had the hold of the ancient ruins on it. Not very convenient. This time, I decide to head into the one near the Pig King, open it up, and hop right in. Chester had been sitting up where I fought the Yukas, but manages to warp into the sinkhole with me. Now, if he only would do the same more often with the Telebrella. A quick sorting of inventory, I then head off to explore this cave. I don't get very far when I notice there was an abandoned camp right next to the entrance. Maybe I should move down here at some point. It even has a frog pond right here, how convenient! I then head off exploring again, going to the ends of peninsulas just so they show up on my map, and almost immediately find the blue biome that has bunny houses. Which also means that the Spalagmite biome with a sinkhole to the ruins level should be close by. And yep, just ahead I find an area with a bunch of Spalagmite, aka cave spider dens, as well as a bunch of Battalisks. A couple of quick whacks with my tentacle spike and the Battalisks are down. I do a quick recon of the area and yes, in fact, the plugged sinkhole to the ancient ruins is in the middle of the dens. That was fast. The cave spiders and spitters are a bit of a pain to clean out yourself, so I continue exploring the area waiting for darkness to arrive so I can recruit the local bunnymen once dusk is here. There's conveniently plenty of carrots growing around their houses, and soon I've got four furry friends to facilitate fighting my ferocious foes. I drop my campus sack containing Chester's eye bone a little ways back to keep him safe, then run onto the webbing to lure out the bugs. The buddy men hate these guys and immediately gank the spiders while I circle around to mine out the nests, destroying them, taking care not to pick up any of the monster meat which would make me a mortal enemy to the bunnies. About a minute later, the sinkhole is open, but I go ahead and use the bunnies to clear out more of the spider dens. I then head back to the bunny hutches to incite further violence, but my first victim manages to run away before getting taken out. Day 84 arrives and the bunnies fall asleep. I don't want to bring them into the ruins just yet, so I decide to kill them off while they're sleeping, but accidentally hit Chester first, which then causes the other bunnies to gank Chester while I kill the first bunny. Oops. I try running away to call off the attack, only to remember that the eye bone was in the Krampus sack that was by the sinkhole, and return to find all of Chester's inventory strewn out on the ground. I end up just tanking the rest of the bunnies to get them dead, then gather up the stuff I want to take with me, and hop down to the ruins level. Once generated, I immediately set off exploring the area around the entrance. The ruins can be pretty dangerous if you aren't careful, as it's filled with nasty creatures, unending darkness, and few resources if you find yourself in a bind. 
I quickly find the labyrinth area which will contain among other things the ancient guardian boss, as well as lead to the sacred biome that can contain fully functional ancient pseudoscience stations which allow you to craft some of the most powerful items in the game. I think the nightmare cycle is active right now though and don't feel like exploring that direction quite yet so head back the other way. I end up getting a couple of crawling horrors after me and decide to go ahead and take them out. The ruins level is the best place to go if you want to stock up on nightmare fuel, as during the nightmare phase shadow creatures will spawn and attack you even if you aren't crazy, and even if you don't kill them, when the phase ends, they'll leave their nightmare fuel behind. I mess up the timing a bit and take a couple of hits with no armor on, but no big deal. I then go ahead and take out a depth worm that was hanging out near the entrance. I often like to make at least a mini base down here somewhere, close to the entrance if possible, and not too close to any nightmare fissures or nightmare lights. If this world were linked to a shipwrecked world, I'd want to place the base by a pond so I could make surf and turf from eels and monster meat, which are great for healing and sanity restoration, but that recipe isn't available in Reign of Giants by itself. This area near the entrance and these two light bulb plants looks like a pretty good spot for a base. But I decided to do some more exploration first and head up the other way to where there are tons of nightmare fissures. I hear a sound indicating a change in the nightmare cycle and I think it's dawn phase just before calm, so I go ahead and get a couple of shadow creatures on my tail. But then the cycle ends and they turn into fuel that I gather up and just look at all the free nightmare fuel. Looks like dark swords will be my weapon of choice from here on out. A bit further ahead I find a ton of blue mushrooms. These are extremely helpful down in the caves as they can be eaten raw to boost hunger and health or cooked to raise sanity. A very versatile food indeed. Looks like this area is the village biome which has the extremely annoying Splamonkeys. These guys will steal stuff from your inventory, backpacks, and chester and throw manure at you if you make them mad. During the nightmare phase they turn into highly aggressive shadow Splamonkeys that can easily stun lock and kill you if they catch you in a corner and have sufficient numbers. I see a couple of their pods but just keep running and eventually bump into Chester who had finally respawned. My inventory had gotten full so I'm happy to offload some stuff into him and then continue onward. Ahead a bit further I hear the sound of a monkey following me and while rotating the camera see that yes I do have a follower. I toss on my armor, turn on him quickly and two quick whacks with my dark sword rewards me with some meat and bananas. Though annoying these guys can be a pretty good source of food down here. Up ahead I exit the village and am back into the starter wilds biome which I finish mapping out. My infroggles are starting to get a little on the low side so I likely won't do too much more exploring this trip. I pause to look at the map for a bit and decide that I'll make my mini base over by those two light bulb plants I noted earlier and then head on over as the nightmare warning phase begins. Fire pit goes down and I cook up some blue mushrooms to boost my sanity and discover that my infroggles instantly banish shadow hands, neat! I then place a crock pot and ice box, stock the fridge for a return visit, and then cook up a honey ham for some added healing. All my headgear is getting pretty low durability though, so once I eat the meal I'll be heading back to the surface. The ham finishes cooking, I gobble it up, and then head out of the ruins. I do a little bit of exploring in the cave level as I head to the exit. This map appears to have a lot of pretty long dead end cave arms, but at least I was able to get to the ruins level this time. I gather some grass and twigs in the grassy areas, grab my telebrella, and then head back to the surface. Right away I warp back to base as the hounds start baying, and am pleased to see that Chester followed me this time. I drop his eye bone off on the way to the tooth traps, then wait for the hounds. Decent number of fire hounds this attack, but looks like I didn't get any red gems, oh well. Cooked green caps and big jerky get my sanity back up, and then I run up to visit Wumbo and clean out his pen. Grass and twigs get topped off from my farms, and then drying racks get harvested. I'm a little low on big meat so I just hang up some frog legs for small jerky. I'm also a bit low on gold so I convert a bunch of meat into eggs to take to the pig king then stoke up the fire and entertain myself playing whack-a-mole worm for the night while also crafting new and froggles. Early the next day I arrive at the pig king and become 10 gold richer and then gather more reeds in the swamp on my way back to base. Next I decide to flesh out my second row of storage chests. Most of the top row was full so time to expand and looks like I have plenty of wood up in my wood box. I want to head back to the ruins before long and go ahead and pre-craft a bird cage so I can take a feathered friend down to make pierogi down there as needed. I then head to the thumper to harvest the fully grown trees, punking a pig in the process. And if you haven't done so already, please remember to hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. It's the best way to make sure you aren't ambushed by a varg in the forest. Promise! 
The next morning, Wumbo watches with interest as I pick my berries and slaughter a gobbler. Most of the bushes need a round of fertilizer, and I've got a bucket of poop on hand to oblige them. I spend the rest of the day tinkering around base, sorting inventory, and contemplating a goggle-making care package. Having had the last trip to the caves cut short due to headgear deterioration, I want to have enough materials on hand to make whatever goggles I might need on an extended ruins expedition. But I'm a little low on gold for that, so shortly before dawn I toss on my infroggles and head to the swamp to see if I can find some free egg seeds to give to the pig king. There's tons of webs, tentacle spikes, and spots strewn about, but not too much meat at the moment. If there's any spiders around, you have to get it fast, otherwise they just eat it. Eventually I find an active merm and lure him close to a tentacle, and he gets spanked and his three buddies rush out to help. I toss on my visor and arm my dark sword to tip the scale in the tentacle's favor, and soon enough have egg seats to make 14 more gold in addition to whatever extra meats I have at base. I find a pair of frogs near the swamp touchstone and gank them with my sword, and use the mosquito sacks on the ground to heal up a bit and then head home. It's getting close to winter and I'm wet enough that I start getting chilled. It really has been raining quite a lot this autumn. I warm up with a big fire while killing mole worms, converting meat into eggs, and finally it stops raining so I can dry off. It's a full moon tonight and my wandering glomer hasn't been seen in a while, so I head over to the statue to get a new one, killing a werepig along the way. I find another werepig trying to take out glomer and quickly dispatch it and grab a fresh flower from the statue. Morning arrives and as I feed the eggs to the big pig, I start hearing a sound that is more than just the king's gluttony. We've got a bearger incoming! I run down into the forest a little ways as I don't want the giant to accidentally trample the pig houses, and then after the warning growl stops, start running around to try to find the beastie, eventually finding him having fun with some poisoned birch nut trees. There's actually a lot of neat things you can do with Berger, and he's great to keep around in a dense forest if you need to stockpile logs. However, since Wagstaff has a thumper and wood gathering is trivial, I decide to just take him out after watching him topple a few birch nut trees first. I run my glomer up a ways to keep him safe, then armor up, grab my extra dark sword, and start to battle the beast. Fighting Berger is a lot like fighting Moose Goose, except that, like Deerclops, Berger does have an insanity aura, and instead of disarming but not damaging Honk, he does a big AoE ground slam every fourth attack that destroys stuff, does decent damage, and sends your weapon flying. Oh, and his regular swipe attack also knocks your weapon away. It takes me a minute to get into the groove of fighting him, but then I find my stride and the fight starts to go much cleaner. Soon enough, the giant is dead, I've got a bunch more meat, as well as some Berger fur that will make a nice upgrade from my puffy coat. The fur could be turned into a hibernation vest, which is as warm as a puffy vest, but also boosts your sanity and decreases your appetite. Back up by Glomer, there are a bunch of battalisks flying around, so I take them out, then head down to the wreckage from Berger to gather wood, living logs, and replant a little bit of the local flora. I'm a bit beat up though and want to get away from the pig village before night falls as it's another full moon. Not trusting Glomer to warp back with me, I just run back to base, getting chilled along the way. Meat goes on the drying racks, other loot gets stored, and then I make a few pierogies to get my health back up, along with some cooked cactus for sanity, topping my brain up the rest of the way with some jerky. And voila, fully recovered from the boss fight, and now I've downed two of the four seasonal bosses. I check the recipe for the hibernation vest, grab the ingredients, craft a dapper vest, and then upgrade it to a hibernation vest. I normally don't use this item much on most characters, preferring to keep my backpack on and stay warm with the beefalo hat or tamashanter, but since Wagstaff needs his goggles, I think a hibernation vest will work well and certainly be an upgrade from the puffy vest. Since winter is right around the corner, I go ahead and move my thermal stone into the warming chest by the fire, and then do some inventory organization. I start putting together a new bundling wrap for my goggle pack, but am interrupted by the warnings of the next hound attack. It's not quite winter yet, and firehounds will still be in the mix, so I leave my Krampus sack above the fighting area, stoke up a fire, and prepare for the poochies. Wow, they really came all together this time, and mostly firehounds again. They go down fast though, and given the moleworm bee lining for the flames, it looks like I got at least one fire gem. Most of the traps get triggered by the attack, so I should probably expand the number of traps as I head into the final level of attacks at 101 days. I go ahead and wear my old infroggles until they break, then spend some more time organizing my inventory. Bundling wrap gets made, then I go ahead and make a couple more tooth traps, which get placed just after dawn if day 92 arrives. 
I then start gathering materials for my goggle pack, deciding to go with a stack of stone, 10 gold, and 10 pigskin, as well as 10 living logs for additional dark swords. This pack will allow me to make spectacles, visors, and infroggles as needed for a good long while. I then get some more bacon and eggs in preparation of heading back to the caves. Grass gets picked at the garden, then I go clean Wumbo's pen one more time. After dusk arrives, I make an extra dark sword for the cave trip while killing mole worms for funsies. Care packages get placed in Chester, hopefully I don't cause his death this time. And then after night arrives, I continue emptying out my inventory of stuff that I don't want to take down with me. And froggles go into Chester, then I make an additional pair as it turns into winter. I'm all set for my cave expedition, which we'll do in the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!